since rubbish can't be true you are an idiot and guess what many years later in 1960 scientists explained Wegner's theory of continental drift shame he couldn't but somebody else came along and did it and because now they had the technology to do that the earth's crust is composed of seven large plates which float on the layer of the earth's mantle the land masses are located on top of these plates now these plates move by plate tectonics causing the land masses to move there's much geological activity where the two plates meet and this causes the formation of what mountains earthquakes and volcanoes I mean people just think about it mm. you've got if we take two pieces of paper all right and these two pieces of paper go these are your plates and they crash into each other look what happens and that's your mountains and when it's really bad earthquakes you have a volcano and a volcano and your earthquakes etc and we've also you know, you must have heard about um the the saint angeles plate that runs through um along in the ocean um and when we have like earthquakes there they have tremors in san francisco and, and things collapse and all the water washes out of swimming pools and things like those are your earthquakes all right, that's what causes them. It's all these ructions that go on underneath us that we can't see. <laughs> now, when the two plates move away from each other, then the area between them gets larger. And the lava builds up between these plates, preventing the plate from coming back. So there's no way they're going to come back. They form that partition between them, lava builds up, and leaves them separated. Now, the theory is that the Himalayas were formed when India's plate crashed into Asia's plate. Mm -hmm. And there we go, you have the <laughs> Himalayas, which everyone loves to climb. Now, if we look at the Ice Ages people, Ice Ages, we know, I mean, th there's that mm. cute movie called The Ice Age, yes. and you've got this little squirrel that scuttles <laughs> around trying to save his, earth go, uh, uh, his acorn, and he, he literally causes the most <laughs> immense glacial impact because of his one acorn. Now, it's quite literally what we do. Um, but, and I mean, that's a cartoon, it's fun to watch. But the history of the ages, your ice ages resulted when there were long periods of very, very cold temperatures, I mean, clearly, causing the expansion of the continental ice sheets. And then we have our polar ice sheets and we have mountain glaciers. I mean, it's, it's cold. Factors causing ice ages, now think about it. I mean, this, this makes so much sense. You've got the composition of the atmosphere. The minute that changes and there's more water, less water, um, it, it's impacted in any way, you are going to have the earth becoming quite cold. Changes in the Milankovitch cycles. What is the Milankovitch cycles? Who knows? Do you know? Come on, think about it. We have summer and then we have autumn and then we have winter and then we have spring. Uh huh. Those are your Milankovitch, Milankovitch cycles. You've that is a beautiful word now. It's a beautiful it. word, yeah. Mm. But those are our cycles. That's what gives us our seasons. Um, so that, that's something new that you've learned. Okay, we have the movement of the tectonic plates resulting in changes of the position of the continents and the ocean. We have variations in the sun's energy. I mean, that is very important. We have the impact of large meteorites. Um, because there is proof, there's scientific evidence that, it ha that they have hit the earth. We have eruptions of large volcanoes. I mean, all of these things are going to give us evidence that, that we have had ice ages. They've mm -hmm. what's caused the ice ages. Now, specific evidence found by our archaeologists and our paleontologists and our geologists <laughs> and all the ologists again there's some very nice mm. careers there people you know what you to go and have a maybe that's a nice research topic for the, for the learners um you different know careers for the different types of of careers for this kind of section of work i mean you know those guys it's it's amazing what you can actually do and you don't have to be muscle man so girls can do it as well <laughs> all right so if we look at the evidence over the, to prove that ice ages have occurred. So you get your Proterozoic period. It's the first ice age occurred about 2.5 billion years ago. Now that's many, many years ago. Then you get your Cryogenian period. Second ice age occurred about 700 million years ago. And then you get your Ordovician period. The third ice age occurred about 400 million years ago. Now Carboniferous period, extensive polar ice caps, 
formed at intervals from 350 to 260 million years ago. This ice age is associated with the Karoo Ice Age. So look at their different periods of your ice age there. There have been multi-million year periods between ice ages, ranging between cold but temperate periods to severe cold periods called the glacial periods. And the warmer periods are then called the interglacial periods. So now that's this is important mm. as well. You must know that you have your glacial periods, very cold. Your interglacial periods are when it's more warmer, temperate. Yeah. So, you know, we could almost say that we, we oh look, we're not quite an interglacial yes. period now, but we're definitely not an ice age. Um, yes. In fact, if anything, we're going to a cooking pot. Yes. Because why? Global warming, um, uh, the, the greenhouse yes. effect, and all our pollution. This is what we are doing to our our environment so instead of going cold we are actually making it nice and, and hot it makes you worry it does. because there's a climate change now are we going to a mass extinction well that that we're going to be doing in the the last lesson for this section uh, we're going to be looking at the sixth mass extinction yes. and what a wonderful big role us human beings are playing to get that we, we're actually trying very hard for the sixth mass yes. extinction um, and we actually need to be wrapped mm. over the knuckles and pulled into line. Maybe you guys can do it, but we'll get to that in the lessons to follow. So I think let's let's stop it here, yes. Farida. Give the learners a bit of a break, and then we'll start with lesson nine. Okay, I'm sure it's going well now. Till next time. Bye. Summary, in these lessons you learned about extinction, about theories of mass extinction, about continental drift, about the history of ice ages, about volcanic activity, about extraterrestrial theories, about evidence of evolution, about the cradle of humankind, about the sixth extinction.